Uh, first thing I want to start off with is doing a budget build is expensive. So this is what I've got so far. A new flywheel, some right stuff, comp cam springs, seal power main bearings, malclevite, uh, molly plasma uh, piston rings, uh, Felpro head bolts, uh, Felpro severe duty head gasket kit, and some malclevite rod bearings, uh, rear main seal, and some slightly used uh, 42 pound injectors, I think they are. They call these the green giants. I'll uh, throw a picture up of those today. I got those ones used, but just to uh, help with the power a little bit more, just because I was 36 pounds, I think I was kind of getting close to the max on those ones, and I'm not sure if I might have had a bad one. So better safe than sorry. So um, something I wanted to bring up. For years, I've been saying that I could uh, build a cheaper, faster engine than what I had before with the 3.1 turbo so i guess now it's time to put my money where my mouth is and we're gonna uh see if i can do it um i'm not gonna go over all the dollars that i spent on all this stuff but it's more than i was expecting in initially uh flywheel had to be changed because the other one my old one has been turned at least twice so far and it's looking pretty crappy already and i'll uh, turn up uh, throw up a picture of that um the all the other stuff is stuff basically that you know you need for a build like this uh, piston rings bearings uh, head gaskets all the other stuff that goes along with that um, rtv and a good set of springs once this project's done i'm going to put up all the dollar amounts that i've put into this and i'm also going to put up all the anything i've been able to sell so off my old van off my old engine anything like that to offset the cost as well because like i said this is a budget build i'm trying to use everything that i can whether it's from the old engine or whether it's from the van. And then I will give you totals in Canadian dollars of what I paid for everything uh, to give you guys an idea of what this kind of job actually costs. And I'm also going to try to put in some of what my time, uh, how much time I've put into it as well. I got the block back from the machine shop. So let's go uh, take a look at that. Well, we got the uh, engine block back from the machine shop. All I did was get them to tank it so it's all nice and clean and I also got them to put some cam bearings in so this is I'm going to try to tape it up and paint it next so this is what she looks like now all oh, those uh, new cam bearings I don't know if you can see if you can see in there there we are got new cam bearings all the way through there I just put an old filter on there just to keep the paint out but obviously it had some oil left in there so she's drained back in there but that's all right we'll uh clean that out and we'll before and put some assembly lube on it before we put the cam in there and we'll, we're gonna get her all taped up and painted next so i got it all taped up it's not a pretty paint job but this isn't a uh a how-to on doing painting an engine box i know there's much better videos out there than what i'm showing you here just uh i'm just trying to Make the block a little bit prettier before we put it all together. I'm just doing a kind of a semi-gloss black. Nothing special, just going to kind of look like it is, just a freshened up. So we'll uh, start to paint it up. And I'll show you when she's done. Hey guys, so it's been a little while since I actually uh, painted this thing, so I didn't get back to it. I was uh, working on the cylinder heads and a uh, whole bunch of other things, trying to get progress on this engine. But this is kind of what it looks like. Again, it's not professional. I didn't, you know, I didn't scrape off all the all the uh, old paint there so you kind of see but so at least it's all one color now and be protected from the uh from the elements i've also got the cylinders honed i uh, because i'm using a molly plasma ring this is done with a uh, 400 grit stone uh the standard stone is like 240 uh which is what i did first and then went back to a, a 400 after um finding a 400 grit stone is a lot harder than i thought it would be but I was eventually able to find one and we got those uh, there and you can see it now and i'm at the point where i'm starting to file down my piston ring so this is my first one uh, i've got to get it to about 22 thou right now that one is sitting at about 20. Uh, so we've got to take it back out again file it some more and we'll get her down to 22 23 thou because i'm running boost on this engine you got to have a little more gap in your ring so that as the 
heat gets in there, it can it has a little more room to expand. So um, on my last engine, I had it set at 21. So this one's got a little bit bigger bore, so you're gonna need a little more bigger, a little more gap. Um, and we'll uh, keep filing and I'll kind of show you the next round here when you would get that filed out and then what it looks like. So we filed that a little more and just got her started in the uh, cylinder there. We're gonna take a piston and we're gonna use that to square it up. Push down about an inch or so. Okay, so it's in there, just, not the, we're just past where the rings go. Uh, the camera here, we're trying to do two things at once. So just like that, so pistons should be in there nice and square. Now we'll pull that out. So we should be in there nice and evenly. And we're gonna take our fielder gauge and we're gonna, oh, what do we said we got there? So that is 20 thou. So we're gonna, again, there's a lot, a lot of videos online about doing this stuff, so I'm not gonna get into it too deep here, but I think I can see this at the same time as, so that goes in there fairly easily. So we're gonna try with the next one up. There's a 21, 21 thou, I should say. See if we can, how that fits in there. Like, so I'm going for 22, so that's in there fairly nice. Let's try the 22. And 22 fits in there nicely. So we're gonna, that's, I might even be able to get a 23 in there, but a 20, I think it might be 23, might be a little tight. We'll try it though, see if we, yeah, 23 would be okay. I'm not gonna, not gonna be that big a deal. And because this engine has got running boost, this is basically the specs are as 22 thou is minimum with the boost. And so there's a 23. We can't try it hard to get them where you can see it. There's 23. Yeah, that barely fits in there. It's a little snug. She kind of hangs up a little bit there now. So I'm good with that. I'm going to take it back out and take a little bit of fine sandpaper, sand down the edges there just to make sure there's no burrs on that edge. I don't, they do recommend like a diamond file, which I don't have. So I'll try some 600 grit sandpaper and make sure it's nice and not catching on anything. We should be good there. Now we got the first one done on piston number one and the top ring is uh, good to go. Uh, I got it the right gap that I'm happy with. Now we got to do the second ring. This one is a little bit different now. You can see it there, but this one's got a little bit of a groove on the bottom of it. And we know at the bottom, because the groove is on the bottom, this has also got this little, you can see that, that symbol there, that symbol goes on top. And basically the rule of thumb when it comes to piston rings, if there's a mark like a dot, a symbol, a word that says top literally, that faces up in every one I've ever seen. Um, and again, the grooves or the notches or the bevels, they always face down. So we know that that is going to be this way, the way this goes. Uh, now, be, this being the second ring, it's going to have a bigger gap um, than the first ring. It's going to be, uh, they said maximum tolerance of 29 thou. Uh, that's for the stock settings. Uh, because we're running boost, I can probably be comfortable getting the 30. Um, you always want your second ring is typically always bigger gap than your first ring. Um, so we'll just put this in the bore and we'll see what the gap is. So same procedure as the first ring. We're going to start at the 25 thou and see, see where we get to here. Yeah, see that's, I cannot even get that. 25 thou won't even go in there. So we're, we're we going down to here. So 22. Yeah, 22 is even snug. So we definitely got to open that up some more and get it uh, get it up to about the 29th hour range. So I got to file it out to I think the right size here. So we got a, a 28th thou feeler there. Shot fits in there nicely. I don't have a 29 in this set for some reason, but I got a 30 and a 30 fits in there and it gets a little gets caught though. So you, you know you're a little too tight. Yeah, so you can see, like I said, that is the uh, the mal symbol. So it's a, these are mal cleavite rings. These facing up, the groove is facing down. 
and that's how it'll be installed on the uh, piston ring as well or sorry on the piston um, I will do the same procedure with all the five other cylinders for each top and second ring and I'll do it for each particular one so this is cylinder number one it's going to go on piston number one cylinder number two is on this side so it'll get done specifically for each piston just to make sure it's done exactly right for each one after we've got that done we can start assembly so working on 3400 cylinder heads tonight um not really doing any major porting but i want to clean them up because when you see things like this i don't know if you can see that little lip right there that's when they machine this initially for the valves and everything it's and put the machine down the hole here it leaves this mark in here and all the 3400 heads i've seen seem to have that same mark some of it have it on the exhaust side you can see a little bit on this side right right there um not usually as badly on the exhaust um but the intake ones all have this heck of a lip right here and that's right where the airflow comes in it comes in from this side let's see if i can shine a light in from the intake port but it comes in from that side flows up through here see my finger comes up here through to the exhaust valve so we got this there we got a whole bunch of casting i don't know if you can see it crap in there i don't know if that's give you an idea what kind of so all those little casting marks and everything that all stops it from flowing well and that's it yes. a little bit on that side not to mention carbon buildup which i've cleaned out as much as i can so i'm not doing any major porting but i'm trying to do some work myself i'm not a head porter by any means i try to uh i try to take these shroud the valves here basically it's called and try to take the lip out of here from where the exhaust valve without uh without nicking the valve seat here so i have to lap these anyways before i put it back together but but try to right here so this is good where the air is trying to get past the valve Let's see if i can throw a valve in here quickly so you got got your valve there when the valve opens up the air is trying to get past there so the smoother you can make it for between the valve right here between the valve and that part of the combustion chamber the better it's going to flow same thing going on the outside exhaust the air is going this way back out and then out front right down here In this spot here if you can see that and the better you the smoother it is and or the, the easier for it to flow i should say it's not necessarily about smoothness that's i don't want to say smooth because on the intake side that's where the fuel has got to mix with the air so you need it to atomize nicely so you, you want a little bit of roughness in there so it can um, atomize and mix together properly on the exhaust going out that you want as smooth as you can possibly get because that's that's where the air is just trying to get out now on these ones they have a you can just feel there now they got a lip all the way around here so basically i'm going in blending this part in on top deshroud the valve a little bit i'm going to be doing a little more work on this back side here as well because you can see it's kind of tapers in there a little bit we want to take a little bit of that out uh, same thing on the exhaust side and we want to blend in this this part around here same thing on the exhaust side it's got a heck of a lip right there that's again any kind of sharp edges like that is not good for flow and you can see on this one next to it i've already started on the intake side you got most of that ridge right down here uh, taken out Again, this is just a rough start right now. Not polished or sanded, sanded nicely. Just again, and just like I said, it's much rounded edges here coming into the throat, what they call the throat around the valve right here. This one here, I've got a little more progress done on it. I'm just doing each each port until I get to where I point. Then I'm gonna flip the head over, do it from the exhaust side from this over here. And we'll, uh, like that right there. And then we'll continue on with the exhaust side, exhaust ports as well. So this one, this exhaust port, I've kind of started already. Still needs a little more work, but she's all nicely blended in there. And uh, yeah, I am not a head porter by any means. I've done a little bit of cleanup work before. This is, again, not much more than that. This is a little more work on the bowls than a head than just cleanup. But uh, these things already flow fairly well. If you check out um, Buddy Mine's Mod Everything channel, that's I'll see, leave a link. He's got a set of 3,400 heads that he... Uh, did similar work too, actually almost identical to what I'm doing here, and uh, he got some very good uh, gains uh, increases on this. So take a look at mod everything, and you can see a lot more uh, 3400 information over there. So I'm starting to work on the exhaust port. Not again, not doing anything crazy, just trying to smoothen it up. But what I want to show you is this here. 
So you know that exhaust port, how much bigger the port is, or the exhaust gasket is than the actual port. So I'm gonna basically hold this up like that. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and scrap around the other, outer edge of the port. So I'm not gonna do a 100% gasket match on this one. The um, I am gonna try to match, get closer on the top. Now this is, it says mounted upside down right now. So this is the top part here. I'm gonna try to get closer on the top because the exhaust manifolds are actually fairly well port match array. So the exhaust valve or exhaust manifolds are actually bigger. They match this hole in the gasket, not the hole in the head. So by that, it, it kind of helps with reversion if you're familiar with what reversion is. So I'm gonna, but again, most of the air flows on top. Um, so when it's flowing on top, we're gonna try to match that a little bit closer just to make it easier. Again, the better the flow, the more the power you make. So we've got the head flipped over, got the intake gasket on. You can see again on this side, how much room there is to port match that. So, and uh, doing that, and there's a, quite a ridge right there where it kind of, let me see if I can, so right from here and it kind of dips in. So it's definitely not a not a good flowing area right there. I haven't taken a lot off, just mostly cleaning it up. Like I said, you, it's definitely not far from finished yet. But So my next uh, job here will be kind of port match around this thing. And I'll just same thing, I'll scribe it on the edge. And we'll do uh, all three ports and you can see. And we'll also, uh, when you get to it, we'll get to the intake manifold and we'll double check that as well. Make sure it matches up. And we should have a nice free flowing intake that way. So we've got all uh, six piston rings gapped properly. Um, we've got all the, some head work done. Uh, it's time to, we've got to lap some valves yet. I'm not going to make you watch that. That's kind of boring. Um, but lap the valves, clean up the heads, and it's time to start assembly. Thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next video, and I'll uh, hopefully we'll start having this engine start going together. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.